and welcome to another Ambassador Vlog. Those of you who have watched some of my videos or talked to my wife may have realized that I enjoy AMC memorabilia, and in some cases, perhaps too much. For instance, right now I'm wearing a lab coat that once belonged to an AMC emissions engineer. Anyways, recently an AMC collector named Neil Curry passed away, and although I did not know him personally, I did have several friends in the AMC community who had done business with him. So when I heard that his family was auctioning off his 35 plus years worth of AMC stuff, in the words of country music artist Tom T. Hall, I thought, Maybe I'll mosey down and look it over, that won't do no harm. And so here I am looking at all the many things for sale to see if I can find some stuff for my ambassador or some other fun things. So first up here we've got grills, you see Rambler grills, more Rambler grills, and then here a very rare 1963 only Rambler grill. I would like to buy some hubcaps for my ambassador, particularly the ones with the ambassador emblem, but there weren't a set of four. There are all kinds of random hubcaps, and I love this design, but there were only three here, and the hubcaps were being sold as a lot. So I thought, I'm not gonna buy 200 hubcaps just to get three for my ambassador and then have to go on eBay to find the rest. As you can see, all different styles. Here are some of the older ones for the older Rambler Ambassador models, and I think there are even a handful of Nash hubcaps. I do love the stylized R logo. Now, of course, here's wire wheels different wheel caps and other odds and ends. I mean, he had stuff from every time period you could imagine, from 50s through 80s. Oh, and hey, look, there's me. Hi. And I always thought these red wheel covers you saw in Pacers were wild. Oh, look, a Marlin hubcap. And I believe these belong on an Alliance. Uh-huh, those classic four lug wheels with a very brown color on them. And we have trim of every shape and size, and then I saw the light. We've got windows, windshields, rear windows, all kinds of vent windows, and, you know, like they said in the Javelin commercial, lots of glass, lots of class. See, we've got Pacer taillights here and some other odds and ends. And uh, Matador Coupe taillights, and I'm not sure what those are there. More taillights, that looks like some uh, Concord taillights, Javelin taillights, Hornet taillights. I mean, some of these weren't even off of cars, they were just parts, they were new old stock stuff. And of course, people pay big money for those, the Javelin and AMX things. And then we've got Spirit taillights and Concord Eagle taillights, and I always liked those in particular. I thought they were a great design of the period. And then we have doors, and more doors. And uh, this particular door, you can tell this must have been on a fancy AMC, because it has the stripes and the extra trim and all that stuff. Center consoles for people who need center consoles. Where the hood, where the hood, where the hood at? Where the, okay, I'm sorry, I'll stop. But uh, no, lots of hoods here, different parts like that. Somebody paid $390 for that AMX hood. Crazy, although that is a good number. And then we had fenders. I believe that's a Hornet fender, followed by an Eagle fender. You can see the marks from the plastic flare there. And then a Javelin fender, which of course has these lovely humps on it. Mm. And then a Concord fender with this lovely wood grain. Tasty. Although I think when you leave light bulbs in a fender like this, it looks so sad. It's like forlorn and depressed on the ground. And then I thought this was ironic. It says four by four, but there's only three doors here. What happened to the last one? Three doors down. Trailer trash? More like trailer treasure. Let's go check it out. All right, so we got boxes and boxes and boxes of parts here. Stuff that uh, doesn't interest me in particular, but uh, you never know what you might find. Speaking of, this does interest me. Let's take a look, what do we got? Uh, owner's manual for Spirit and Concord. Oh man, this thing is really old, what is this all? Oh, check out that lettering, pretty cool. And uh, what else, I guess these are all small things. Not a lot of pictures, a lot of service and like manual type stuff. Uh, looking in this box, more service stuff, although check out that graphic design, I love that, that falling AMC logo. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And, oh man, look how happy this family is to have a gremlin and a hornet. Oh, that's sweet. And uh, let's see what we got here. We've got more manuals and references and technical service bulletins and maintenance and all kinds of stuff. Not exactly the most exciting thing to read, but uh, cool to see that somebody saved all this stuff. Uh, let's see here in the back. We've got more Jeep stuff. Jeep stuff. Ooh, now this looks interesting. This is strictly on the QT. Oh, it's a Quadratrack 
Uh, this book would come if you're watching a film strip. This was like the follow along textbook here. Now, lots of cool pictures in here. If you're a real four wheel drive nut, uh, you know, you can fully understand how Quadratrack worked. And uh, Renault stuff, and eh, nobody really cares about Renault. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's about it for that box. Ooh, what do we have here? Oh, Mopar, get out of here. You're not AMC. This is AMC. Check that out. Harbison AMC Jeep, the American people. <laughs> what an awesome sign there with the little flag on the right. Huh. And, uh, ooh, we got another license plate here. This is uh, Mickey's Motor Sales in Ellington, Connecticut. Who saves this stuff? This is incredible that somebody has this. Okay, we got stickers. Stickers, that's not original. That's a reproduction. Uh, stickers, 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 more stickers. Yeah. Ooh, now this is cool. This is a dealer inspection sheet when you get a new vehicle delivered from the factory. And it's funny, that looks like an Eagle, but it's not actually an Eagle. If you look at it closer, it's just sort of a generic car. It's not even an AMC. Now this is the stuff people pay big money for. All these models here. Notice each one of them has an individual auction number, so they're selling them one by one. They're not selling them as a group. And uh, let's see, anything cool? Ooh, look at that. We've got an ambassador model. I've never seen anything like this before. Check that out. Look at the detail on that. I think that's a 1969, given the roof line and the, the rear end design here. Yeah, yeah, only 69 had that style taillight on it. And uh, I always thought they were pretty cars in their own right. So very cool, but uh, I'm sure these will go for plenty of money. And since it's not even the same year as my car, uh, I appreciate it, but I'm not going to bid on it. The Drag On Lady AMX here. I actually met Shirley, the Drag On Lady, at an AMC banquet once. She was very nice. I hope I get the chance to talk to her again. She uh, certainly is an interesting part of AMC's motorsports history. Ah, now this is the stuff that people pay big money for. Signs. Check this out. There was a Jeep dealer by my parents' house that had this sign over their service bay well into the 2000s. They just never took it down. This sign, people pay enormous amounts of money for those, so stay tuned for that. But let's see, what else do we have here? Uh, this Marlin sign, that's pretty cool. It looks like a light-up sign that you'd plug in and hang somewhere. Yes, yeah, it does have a cord on it, so that, that's going to go for huge money. And uh, what do we have in this box here? It looks like a neon sign. Hmm, this looks like a familiar logo. Let's take a look. Yeah, it is a neon sign, but uh, I don't know if it's ever been out of this box. It looks like it's never been used. And if you look closely, you see it says Ambassador. How cool is that? I totally would bid on this, but I probably can't afford it. Neon signs are a whole nother level of collecting. This was part of AMC's buyer protection plan. You got a loaner car if your car had to go in for warranty service. And it just shows how much AMC cared about the buyer protection plan that they would make individual signs, not advertising a particular car, just advertising the warranty. Let's see, we have a moldy pegboard here. Oh, but it says Rambler at the top, so somebody's probably gonna pay a ton of money for that. Now, as cool as I think these are, I don't really understand why you would buy one, because it doesn't have a specific model name. It's not like it says Javelin or Gremlin or anything. So they are really cool and they do have a great logo on them. But is somebody going to hang this in their garage or in their shop? I, I like it, but I personally don't see the appeal. Now, a fun fact, though, most people think the red part of the AMC logo is just a triangle, but it's actually curved at the top if you look closely. So a lot of times when people make reproductions for T-shirts and stuff, they leave that detail out. The red part is not a complete triangle. It does have a little curve at the top of the logo. This sign looks like it's seen better days, but I'm sure that won't stop people from paying tons of money. And uh, there's lots of interesting stuff down here now. Ooh, what is this? Ambassador. Check that out. I guess this was like a light up sign or something, but it doesn't have any actual light in it. Maybe it would slide into a bracket that had other model names in it. I'm not really sure. But uh, like I said, anything in this gallery of light up signs here is probably going to sell for huge money, so I probably can't afford this. Still very cool, although it does have a tiny little scratch there. Speaking of damaged signs, there are uh, some things here that have definitely seen better days. And this is not even an AMC, but somebody brought this. I don't know anything about these scooters. Maybe they're collectible. I don't know. Somebody did bring their Javelin to the sale. That's pretty cool. Somebody else brought their Eagle to the sale. Oh look, somebody brought their Chevy to the sale. Uh, now, I can't resist a good Ford tractor. I don't see a for sale sign on this. In fact, I don't even know what model this is. There's a number on the loader, but I don't actually see a number on the tractor. Judging by the decals and the paint color, I believe this is like an early 80s model, but I'm not 100% sure. But uh, yeah, it doesn't have the typical high-low eight-speed transmission that most Fords have. But uh, 
you know, blue tractors are always okay in my book. Now this tractor actually is for sale. I don't think it's part of the auction, though. Ah, somebody drove a Hornet AMX, all the way from New York, by the way. Louvers. Mm. I always thought the body kit on these things looked super cool. And yeah, I know they're slow as crap and they're not nearly as valuable as a real AMX, but I think that they're a cool part of AMC history and uh, definitely worth remembering. Maybe he drove it here to get a new windshield. And the auction has begun. All right, here's where the excitement starts. And uh, there's a guy just casually leaning on the rear half of a gremlin. All right, bumpers, bumpers, bumpers. They're not selling anything I want yet, so I'm going to keep snooping around here. Looking in one of the other trailers, I mean, this guy must have either had an AMC dealership or was connected with somebody who did, because look at all these boxes. Boy, it's really dark in here. Good thing they put these tiny LED lanterns that do absolutely no good to light up the inside of the trailer. All right, now look at this guy here. He came prepared. He's got a flashlight. He's digging through boxes. He's looking underneath stuff. This is definitely not his first rodeo. Father's Day is coming up. Time to get Dad something special. Ah, now this is the stuff that interests me. Manuals and brochures. Although I think I have those Rambler ones already. Hmm, let's see what else there is. Uh, more literature. More technical stuff. I love this mid-70s color scheme that they have. I just think it's absolutely gorgeous. Lots of pictures if you're into reading picture books. And uh, what do we have over here? Aha! Check out this thing. This thing must be ancient. Check that out. Oh, I wonder what's inside it. Let's take a look here. Let's uh, find a place where we can open it. And uh, there's nothing inside, but some pretty cool pattern on the binder there. That's pretty neat. And we got a giant book. Oh, look how happy those guys are to be getting their AMCs worked on at the dealership. And then we have this. Yes, I know it's not AMC. It's, it's from the Chrysler era, but how awesome is this? It's like a fake silk banner for Jeep Eagle when they sponsored the Olympics. That is sweet. And what do we have here? Looks like horn rings from cars. Hmm, very neat. I always thought this was one of the greatest logos ever. That is just a great example of design. Ugh, so gorgeous, except my car doesn't need a horn ring, otherwise I'd buy it. Oh boy, I sure am tired. Hmm, maybe if I can just come here and rest my arm for a second. Ah. All right, back outside here, let's see. We've got some advertising. This is the stuff that gets me excited. 1978 advertising, I guess this is like a set of hooks for keys that you'd hang at the dealership, maybe for test drives or something? Aha! It's the 79 AMC Spirit DL. I love reading the descriptions here. Let's see, custom interior with wood grain accents, color keyed styled wheel covers and white walls, and most importantly, electronic quartz digital clock! Oh wow! All right, I saw this poster here. I'm going to try and open this and check it out. I see a matador something, uh, ire protection. Yeah, this thing's way too brittle. I'm afraid I'm going to rip it. Better put it back. AMC Eagle. A switch from every car in the world. I can't help but make sound effects every time I touch that. <laughs> And uh, let's see what else we have in here. Oh, this is just general 1980s Eagle Concord Spirit stuff. And uh, it has the same photos as the brochure. They're just arranged on these like hard cardboard signs. All right, we have a couple advertisements for air conditioning. And let's see, experience an extraordinary ride in a pacer. Wow. And then these are like weird wooden framed cardboard pictures of different models, I guess. I don't know if you'd hang those on a wall or something. It's obviously dealership stuff. I just don't know what. Now, let's see what we have here. <laughs> oh, yes. The Tough Americans. Don't sell the Tough Americans short. It's like a little reflective piece of cardboard. It has like a metallic finish on it. We've got some other interesting stuff in here. We have some Z-Bart promotions. That was a big part of AMC's advertising during like the Concord Spirit Eagle era. Uh, we have more air conditioning advertising and CB radios that you could buy aftermarket dealership stuff. That's pretty cool. These are rally stripes. It's on like a clear piece of plastic. I guess you could hold that up to your car and see what they would look like with your paint. I don't know what that's about. 
Speaking of clear see-through stuff, check this out. It's an AMC Eagle window cling. So I guess this would sit on the car window in the showroom and show the different features it has. That is super cool. I really like that and I've never seen something like that before. All right, now this is more Eagle stuff and it looks like it's some sort of cardboard signage that you fold and assemble together. I see like dotted lines and there's a there's other pieces to this. I don't know if you like attach them to each other and make a pyramid shape that you then sit on top of a car's roof. I don't know. We've got more Eagle advertising. This is some, no, let's see, Test Drive 1, AMC Concord, Test Drive 1 today. Hmm. And then this is some original Eagle advertising. You can tell it's from 1980 because the, the grill design and then also the slogan, which I always loved. And then this is neat. We have these pacer diagrams, which are on some kind of like hard composite wood or heavy cardboard type stuff. And I've seen some of these cutaway diagrams, but I've never seen them from every single side of the car. They have back, the back side, and then the side side, and then the front side, which I thought was really neat. Bandit, this here is the snowman telling you you can get a CB for your AMC. Do you copy? 10-4. And you can also get a personalized sound system with a digital tuner, and a cassette deck. I'm getting this poster for my friend Matt, who helped me digitize all those AMC videotapes from the Kenosha History Center. He'll absolutely love this. So I found this particularly intriguing. It says Jeep Eagle Accessories, but down in the corner it says American Motors Parts and Service, but it also says sponsor of the 1988 US Olympic team. So this must have been like one of the last things AMC printed before they were absorbed into Chrysler. Now this was awesome. This is a clear eagle poster that you would hang in a dealership window so that people could see it driving by. And it talks about the revolutionary select drive system, which allowed you to switch between two and four wheel drive. And it's just absolutely gorgeous graphic design. Boy, looking at all these AMC parts has me exhausted. And we have this Rambler protective service sign, which would tell you when to take your car into the dealership to get it worked on. That's a nice piece of history. And let's see here, test drive today, Matador, oh man. So we've got some great 70s signage in here. The unbeatable combination, 74 Matador and the buyer protection plan. They really love that buyer protection plan. Let's see, how to keep cool in a crisis, gremlin with factory air conditioning. <laughs> That's one way to do it, I guess. Oh, uh, what else? Um, special Gremlin air conditioning sale. They really love to push air conditioning in the 70s. You see a lot of ads for that. We got more posters. What could this be? Come in and meet the economy experts at AMC. Oh, what's this? A gigantic 1979 AMC Concord silver anniversary poster. <laughs> that is awesome. And uh, what else do we have here? Ooh, Matador, which was new for 1974, the Matador Coupe. And you see here is the Oleg Cassini edition. There's Mr. Cassini hanging out with the car, which had copper accents, not just on the wheel covers, but uh, also on the headlight bezels and on the grill. And uh, there's Mr. Cassini just, uh, you know, creeping over this lady's shoulder while uh, she stares intently at the seat fabric, trying to ignore him. And so here's a look at all the different Matador models you could get. Now, let's see what else do we have. Ooh, it's the interior fabric chart. Check that out. Ooh, and you can actually touch it. It's real fabric. Hmm. This feels like my pants. I spy some 70s graphic design. Let's see. Two ways to show them while you're the economy experts. Matador with a six-cylinder engine and Gremlin with air conditioning. Again with the air conditioning. Always the air conditioning. Look how excited this guy is to get Gremlin with air conditioning. All right, so now we have a Pirate. Oh, no, Spirit. Oh, okay, now it makes sense. Let's see. This is some more 80s stuff here. And, uh, oh, no, wait. Now, this is back to the 70s. Yeah, these aren't necessarily in chronological order. They're just kind of all thrown together. And now there's a 1980 Eagle poster, which is really, really cool. And, uh... 80 Spirit AMX Concord Pacer Eagle four-wheel drive. Uh, and yep, and there's another sign. Like I said, they're all just kind of thrown together. Now these appear to actually go together. These are all 73. So there's 73 Javelin with the Pierre Cardin interior and 8-track deck. Ooh. I actually talked to Vince Geraci, an AMC designer, about how they developed that interior, and, and that was pretty cool. Now on to Gremlin, backed by the buyer protection plan, yet again just chilling at the beach with the sand and the surf and the random people walking along. 
popular options include power steering, manual, or power front disc brakes. <laughs> it's hilarious because all of those things that are optional are now standard on even the cheapest car for sale today. I finally spied something I'm interested in. This is a 1972 set of posters, and it appears I'm going to have to take a better look. All right, so we've got paint samples. We've got, of course, buyer protection plan because everything talks about that. But then it also has a poster for every single model AMC offered that year. And this is really neat. It's the complete set. It has Gremlin. It has Hornet. But here's what I'm really excited for. Ambassador for 72. Look at this. Oh, it's got all three models. It's got the two-door. It's got the station wagon. And then down at the bottom here, it's got the sedan as well. And so this is the year my car is. It's a 72. And so it's so cool to see the original dealership advertising. And then they have a second page here too with all your interior options as well. So I'm definitely going to have to bid on this. Dollar, five dollar, five dollar, ten. I bite that lid. Oh, you got a ten, you got a ten, 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 twenty, twenty-five, twenty-five. Hey, buddy, 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 buddy. Something else that's interesting, not just this Rambler Rebel hood, but as much as I hate modern dealership stickers, I love seeing vintage ones on old cars. Gas tanks, and this very ancient looking wheel. Hmm, I wonder who made these tires. Was it the Illuminati? Unsurprisingly, not a lot of people were bidding on this. Oh man, this auction has me all jacked up. If these were Rebel machine wheels, this entire pile would be worth more than every dollar I've made in my life. Getting a second look at the grills here, we've got some Hornet and Gremlin stuff, pretty cool. Inspecting these hood ornaments here makes me wish that modern cars still had them, but I guess kids today only care about their cell phones and skateboards and don't care about hood ornaments like good Americans. Boy, oh, 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 oh. Getting a closer look at the rear half of this Gremlin, I guess maybe it was a race car or something at some point. Now this is not for sale, but it definitely caught my attention. This is a Rambler Rogue, which was a V8 powered Rambler American. You see it has a Typhoon 290 engine. And in a car this small, it would be really fast, especially because this one has a four speed on the floor and a really neat car. And this is my first time actually seeing one in the wild. They're not particularly common, but that's what makes them really special. Time for lunch. Speaking of rare, I can't believe this is here. This is a VAM Lerma. Now, what is that, you may ask? Well, VAM stands for Vehiculos Automotores Mexicanos, which was a government-controlled Mexican automaker owned partially by AMC. And the VAM Lerma is like a four-door AMC Spirit, basically, that was sold only in Mexico. And so this guy must have imported it from Mexico to the United States because it was only sold there. And as you can tell by like the silhouette, it's basically a spirit with four doors. I'm sure it's a little more complex than that, but you look inside and it's basically all the same AMC components. It's just that this was a Mexico only vehicle, which is really neat. You see it says Lerma there on the side, but really neat that the guy drove it here. It's not particularly valuable, but it's definitely rare. All right, they're slowly making their way through the junk. Uh, you know, good auctioneers always save the exciting items for last so that people are forced to stand around and bid on boring stuff first. That's definitely what they're doing here. But if you get tired, you can always come over here and take a seat. Speaking of seats, there's this bin full of what looks to be original unused seat fabric. I really love this green. Mm, look at that pattern. Gotta take the parts back to the truck. Now these are cool, these are floor mats, but they have like a weird concept car drawing on them, and uh, the plastic has some kind of like sparkles embedded in it. And at this point, I had to put away the camera because I actually wanted to bid on some of the posters and stuff. And so here are all the things I brought home from the auction. Taking a closer look, there are my ambassador posters, which are my pride and joy. And there are my other signs for Matador, Javelin, Hornet, and Gremlin. I was able to get the complete set, which I was very happy about. There is the sound system poster that I bought for my friend Matt. I know he will definitely enjoy looking at the different radio options for his AMC Eagle that he owns. 
and of course the 1979.5 Silver Anniversary AMC Concord DL Limited Edition poster. Which, I measured it, it's actually 6 feet wide and 4 feet tall. It's absolutely enormous. And in part because of its unwieldiness, I, being an idiot, ripped it right there, so I'll have to make sure I take good care of that and try and patch that up. And this actually isn't for me, it's for a friend of mine who owns a Silver Anniversary Concord, so I had to get him the poster to go with the car. And even though somebody else paid an insane amount of money for that box of 1980s advertisements, he was willing to sell me this Tough Americans card for a buck. I couldn't turn it down. As I was leaving, I mentioned to a friend that AMC collectors are a certain kind of crazy. I feel like other enthusiasts don't save this much junk. I mean, there were so many disposable things at that auction that should have been thrown away years ago, but somebody loved AMC enough to hold on to them. I mean, stuff like cardboard boxes with AMC logos and printable banners and even that little Tough Americans card, all that stuff was meant to be used and then thrown away when the promotion ended but somebody cared enough to hold on to all of it, and now it's so great to have it today, because unlike Ford or Chevy or Toyota, AMC isn't still around. They're not gonna make any more of this stuff, and so it's so cool that somebody cared enough to hold on to it, and something as simple as this poster with seat fabrics on it brings so much joy to me and all these other collectors. And it's one of the many reasons I love being a part of the AMC community. They have such a strong sense of history and such a love for these cars and everything about them. Well, thanks for coming with me. I figure the kind of people who are subscribed to this channel are the kind of people who can appreciate all that old AMC stuff. In the meantime, don't forget to stay tuned because we have a video coming soon about the vinyl top replacement of my AMC Ambassador, and I know you don't want to miss that. Until then, don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends, and thanks for watching.